Hey, welcome back. So, as you know from other videos, I love to cook. I love to cook in cast iron. I love to cook when we go camping. I have my Dutch oven over here that we just got back from camping. It needs a thorough cleaning and also a re-seasoning. So I also have my regular cast irons here that are getting a little bit scrubby and that type of stuff. So we need to re-season them as well. So in this video, I'm going to show you my method of re-seasoning all of my cast iron skillets as well as my Dutch oven. Uh, when I do cook, I can throw some eggs in there and it doesn't stick. It's actually really good. So if you follow these steps, you can do the same thing with yours. So this is everything you're going to need. All right, so here's my Dutch oven. It still has charcoal on the top and then the and inside, ah! Yeah, that's pretty nasty. We're gonna get that cleaned out. Um, also have 12 inch or 14 inch um, cast iron skillet. Got a 12 inch cast iron skillet and we got an eight inch. Now this one right here has a good little, it's a great story. My wife, Steph, my CFO, actually found that at a consignment or maybe a uh, buy sell trade I, i'm not sure but she picked it up it was completely disgusting the whole bottom was had scale on it i hit it with a wire brush seasoned it quite a few times and now it's one of my favorite ones that I, this one i only cook vegetables in this one here is my bacon and eggs camping one and this one's only for meat and that one everything all right so we got our cast irons we need to clean it what are we going to clean it with well you can buy one of these uh, this one is just a piece of uh, rubber inside with a uh, chain meal, I guess you want to call it. Anyway, it's just steel rings all the way around it. So you can get that nooks and crannies with this thing. But let's just say you're out on the trail. You don't have that with you or it's completely disgusting and you don't want to use it or you just don't have one. But that's okay. If you got tin foil, you got a scrubber. All you really want to do is ball it into a ball. Once you get everything loosened up, you can use this, scrape it around, and it will get rid of all your stuff. Uh, sometimes you gotta dig down pretty hard with it, but it still works. Now, if you have really hot water in here and these things are still hot, good set of tongs works great. Grab a hold of your stuff. Yes, that's a technical phrase. You're gonna go around and actually clean everything up. Now, you wanna make sure you get any kind of rust, because these are cast iron. If you don't do it properly, you will rust. So you want to use rust, uh, get rid of all the rust, get rid of all the big chunks and that type of stuff and actually get down and make sure it is clean. Now, once you do clean it, you do need to season it. And when you season it, you want to use oil. So there's different types of oil. This is olive oil. Olive oil is just it's really thick, it actually is too thick, and it doesn't exactly get down into the grains of the cast iron. Okay, so you wanna use a thin oil. Now you can use coconut oil, that works pretty well. I usually just grab some regular old vegetable oil. It's pretty thin, it uh, smears everywhere, and then once we heat it up, it gets right into the pores of the cast iron, and it just doesn't stick, it's awesome. So, all right. Now, I do use some paper towel just to actually smear the oil around because you wanted to get it on the sides, the handle, get it everywhere that you don't want to rust. Because like I said, they're cast iron and they're going to rust. So, let's get started. So how we're going to clean these things. I already showed you the utensils that you'll use, but cleaning it is actually one of the easy parts. You put some water in it and you boil it. <laughs> Plain and simple, don't use any soap. Just use water, hot, hot, hot water. So what I'm gonna do is put some water in these pans and I'm gonna put it on the stove and then we're gonna boil it. So let's do that. All right, so we're on the next step. I have all three burners going. I have three pans and I have water in them. Take a look. All right, so one, two, and three. Basically, we're just gonna boil it. While it's boiling, take your tin foil or a metal spatula or something like that and just kind of work it around because uh, basically you're just trying to get all the big chunks and loosen them up. So now we gotta wait for the water to boil. So I'll be back. All right, so we're starting to boil a little bit. Got my tin foil. I'm gonna move it around the pan. Don't do it too fast or you will be making a mess. So all the grease and the fats and all that stuff is starting to come up and getting into the water. And as you can tell, I put a pot of water over here and that's for the Dutch oven. Cause I can't really put a Dutch oven on top of a stove. 
Now you always know when it's clean. If you feel lumps, it's not clean yet. Keep going. All right, so we're ready to wipe out our pan. Bring it over to the sink. Pour out all that water. Pan's looking decent, but we're still gonna scrub it out. Now here's the thing, when you wanna put water in here to rinse it out, make sure your tap water is as hot as it will get. Because if you put cold, ice cold water on a very hot pan, it is cast iron, but you can warp it or even break it. So I'm just going to take a simple little nylon brush. Now that's pretty hot. Get the bottom, get top, get everything, rinse off, set aside, let it dry. All right. Once the other ones, they're getting, getting there. Once the other ones are done, we're going to do the same thing to those. And then we're going to show you how to season it. All right. I had water boiling in all four of them. Uh, the Dutch oven, I used a pot just to boil water. I threw it in there, squished that around, and let it sit for a few minutes. Um, that's actually looking a lot better. Um, we went ahead and cleaned the top. Actually, my uh, camera dude, Corbin, cleaned the top for me, which was fantastic. Um, so the next thing before you put oil in it, you got to have it dry. Oil and water don't like to mix. So don't put water in it. Make sure it is completely dry. Now, you can use towels. You can use the other stuff. But... There could be some remnants on these pots, some oil and grease and stuff like that, that could destroy your towels. And I'm sure your spouse will not be happy with you if you do that. So, it's not very environmentally correct, but hey, use some paper towel. I'm gonna dry these out. All right, so I've dried everything off. I use a couple of pieces of paper towel. This will be the reason why you don't use your spouse's towels. They're pretty nasty. Um, and if I'll give you a close-up look on each one. Some of them, all of the seasoning came off. That's why we're gonna re-season them. But uh, my two favorite, oh yeah, they're still beautiful. I probably don't really need to season these two, but I'm gonna do it anyway, just because that's what I'm getting ready to do. Uh, my Dutch oven, wow, I pretty much took everything off because it needed a huge scrubbing. And the cheap knockoff cast iron that I think I got from Agri Supply, yeah, it needs a, a really good seasoning. This one has not been my favorite. Now the Lodge, actually I got it from Bass Pro Shop, but fantastic. Love it. All right, so we need to put oil in all these. Now when you put oil on it, you're gonna put it in the fr in the inside, the around the lids, the lid, uh, the back side, the bottom, everywhere. Everywhere needs some oil because again, it's cast iron and it will rust. The oil keeps it from rusting. The uh, vegetable oil is what I usually use. Put a little bit in each one. Okay. You see inside the Dutch oven. And this is the cheap one. That's the awesomeness. That's the other awesomeness. So we're going to put a little bit of oil. Now we're not going to put a lot. We're just going to put a little. Just a dab will do you. Whoop. Okay. We got a lot on that one. But it's all right. So I'm gonna take some paper towel. I'm gonna fold it up just so we can swirl it around. Now you might see some uh, arms come through here because I'm gonna recruit my camera dude. All right, like I said, all every surface. See how it's starting to rust on the backside? Oh, look at that. It's gonna be pretty. What's, wait, what's your problem? All right, so my camera dude needs to lift some weights. I haven't moved in like three months. Quarantine uh, hasn't been friendly to him, I guess. Can't do his lacrosse. He's just now getting back to scouts. So I have a couple of the pots, uh, pans ready to go. Uh, they are completely soaked with oil. And what we're going to do now is put them in the oven because we got to heat them up. So let's put them in the oven. All right, so I do not have the oven on right now and that's part of it, all right? Do not put it on yet. Wait till you have everything in there. Now I have my nice pan that's nice and oiled. I'm just gonna stick it in. All right, as you can see, I have all four of those in there. I got two pans on the bottom and I got my Dutch oven and then also have my little pan. So basically we're gonna stick them in here. Close the lid very carefully and now we're just going to hit bake, start. 
Now when that number right there, right now it's at 100, once that reaches 350, I hit cancel, it turns it off. And basically what you're gonna do is just let it cool down naturally. All right, once it cools down, then you can actually take it out and then the process is pretty much done. So basically what it's doing is that all that oil that you put in there is nice and loose and it's nice and warm and it's gonna slowly seep inside of the pores of that cast iron. Um, that's why when you use olive oil, it doesn't really soak in very well. Vegetable oil works so much better. And that's another reason why I started at zero and then preheat it so that it slowly, gradually gets in there so that it will just go into the pores. If you just throw it in there, it will start boiling too fast. Um, well, not really boil, but it will get hot too fast and it won't be able to sink in. So that's the reason why we're doing it that way. And then when you come back, it'll be cool. And then we can go out from there. See you in a few. All right, so the buzzer just buzzed. It hasn't been preheated. So I'll get that in now. Let's turn it off. Now I'm not gonna open it, I'm just gonna let it cool down all the way down to basically room temperature. So tomorrow morning I'll come back and finish this off and pull them out and I'll show you what they look like. Hey, good morning. Well, I say good morning because I left, left all this stuff inside the oven all night. Now, they look pretty darn good. Take a look. All right, so this guy right here was kind of grayish. Now it's all black, because look at it, it's so beautiful. Got one right here, beautiful. Oh, beautiful. And how about the cast iron? Oh yeah, nice and shiny. So this is pretty much how I take care of all my cast irons. Uh, it seems to work. Uh, I've done it for years. Um, I do have some drawbacks with this method. One of them being, it stinks up the house. You know, if you're going to be doing this, make sure the windows are open, fans are going, your spouse is out of town, something. I got a little bit of grief last night about the smell. Um, another way that you can do it is actually on a grill. If you get the grill up really, really, really hot, you can stick these guys in there and then just let it cool down naturally. Um, I was doing this last night, so I just did it in the house. The other thing that you need to worry about with uh, with your Dutch oven is that you don't want it to. Ooh, that was loud. <laughs> you don't want it to uh, grow anything on the inside while it's in storage because you don't use a Dutch oven that often. Now I'm going to show you a couple different uh, real quick tricks that you can help out with storing it. Be right back. All right. So when you store your Dutch oven, you want to keep your lid open. Uh, just enough to get some air in there. If you leave it in there without any air, then you do grow mold and you grow other things. Uh, one quick and easy, very cheap way of doing it, tin foil. All I did was just fold it up into a little strip and you put a couple of them around it, just kind of, so all you do is just take it, put it on the lid and then close it. Now there's just enough air going through there that it will keep everything from up and going bad. So you can do that. Um, I've also seen people kind of use a pot holder. One of the ones my kids made. Just kind of lay it over the side and then it keeps it from getting nasty. All right, hopefully you enjoyed a little bit of that. Uh, maybe learn something or maybe you know a different way. Put it in the comments, let me know. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get these guys outside into the garage, uh, the Dutch oven, over into the chug box, which if you don't remember what that is, you, there's a video about that. But anyway, uh, I'm gonna go get my real job done and drink my coffee, because it is early and I'm tired. But anyway, until next time, enjoy. Keep eating, use your cast irons, because they're awesome.